Hello, I'm Catalin Marinas, fellow engineer and Linux kernel lead at ARM Limited. While my day job is mostly Linux kernel development and maintenance, I have an interest in formal methods and use them occasionally to help with my tasks. This may be modeling a spin lock implementation, some tricky concurrent algorithm, or just software hardware interaction. This talk, however, is not about Linux, but something both hardware and software people have been concerned with for the past three years. Cache speculation side channels from a formal angle. From the Wikipedia definition, a side channel attack is an attack that gains information from the actual hardware implementation rather than relying on a weakness in the algorithm itself. For example, in the cache side channels case, the attacker can probe the content of the cache by timing the access to certain memory locations. With cache speculation side channels, the attacker uses the imprint left in the cache by instructions executed speculatively in the victim. The aim is to create a significantly simpler abstract model of CPU speculative execution and define its confidentiality and integrity properties. We then want to check whether the security properties are upheld by the CPU specification for any reasonable code sequence. Such model allows us to explore related vulnerabilities and workarounds at an abstract level and in a unified way. As we'll see, the model can explain the current Spectre and Meltdown vulnerabilities. Let's start with the Spectre Variant 1 example taken from the ARM Speculation Side Channels white paper. This is a code sequence of 64-bit ARM assembly running in a high privilege mode, for example, an operating system kernel. The input provided by a low privilege user is held in the X0 register and represents an untrusted offset into a kernel array. If such offset is out of bounds, the algorithm skips the kernel array access with a conditional branch instruction. If the decision on the branch inside the CPU is delayed, for example because the X1 upper bound hasn't been loaded yet, the CPU may speculatively continue the execution of the AMBER instructions in this sequence. With X0 out of bounds, the first LDRB instruction will access potentially secret information belonging to the kernel. Subsequent arithmetic operations on this value and the load from a user address at an offset derived from the secret data will leave a trace in the cache. While the register state under speculation is discarded, the attacker can still probe the cache state by timing the memory access. Let's now dive into the abstract CPU model and define the system state. Rather than using 64-bit values and arithmetics for which the model checker won't scale, we go for sets of model values. We define symbols for low and high addresses, data values, and a set of names for the CPU registers. Since we don't have actual numbers and arithmetics, we need to define a set of operations on these values. An operation is a function that takes two values and gives back a new one. Optables here is the set of all such functions over the values we defined. The system state consists of a privilege mode, registers mapping names to values we defined, memory mapping addresses to values, and the cached state of all addresses. We don't need to model the cache as an associative array since, for our security properties, we are only interested in whether a memory location is cached or not. Note that we don't include a program counter, although it can be part of the regs set of model values. With the system variables defined, we need a set of actions to transition between states. We'll use tuples of instruction mnemonics and arguments for modeling the program execution. We have a Havoc subset of instructions that set the register state to a specific value. The move instructions copy a value from a register to another. The memory accesses are only permitted if the current privilege mode allows loads and stores to specific memory locations. For example, the access OK operator will not allow a low privilege mode to read or write high addresses. The op subset 
contains all possible instructions that take values from two source registers and combine them into a new value stored in a destination register. To switch the system state between low and high privilege modes, for example a system call and the corresponding return, we introduce a set of two instructions, hcall and lret. The set of all valid instructions is the union of these subsets. The execute instruction dispatcher is responsible for interpreting the commands and changing the system state accordingly. The program execution is modeled as a succession of steps starting from an initial state. To reduce the number of initial states for the model checker, we chose registers initialized to zero and caches empty. The next step chooses an instruction non-deterministically from the valid set and invokes the dispatcher which is responsible for changing the system state. Since we pick instructions non-deterministically, there isn't a need to model a program counter for the instruction flow. As you can see in the example of the bottom of the slide, the register state starts with an initial zero values and transitions according to the instructions being executed. In the final step, we have an operation that takes the values D1 and H1 into registers and computes a new value H2 that is stored in the destination register. So far, the behavior of our system only modeled the algorithmic state that is visible to the programmer. Under speculation, the CPU may execute additional instructions starting from a programmer visible state and either discarding the resulting register values or committing the state as value. Depending on how, for example, a previously delayed condition check was resolved. In our model, we only consider the discarding of the speculative register state. Since the programmer's view of the registers remains unchanged during speculation, we model it as another instance of the previously defined simple CPU, but with a separate register state. So the new, slightly more complex system consists of two simple CPUs that share the memory and the cache, but with separate register banks. <coughs> Know that not all instructions are available under speculation, especially those that can modify memory, as such state is programmer visible. For now on, I will refer to executed instructions as those steps visible to the programmer affecting the algorithmic state, and speculated instructions as those where the speculative register state will eventually be discarded. You can see uh, the example figure where states 0 and 1 of the executing CPU registers are kept in sync with a speculating one. If the executed instructions are delayed, uh, but the speculation continues, the instructions only affect the speculative register band and are eventually discarded. The TLA plus specification of our new system behavior with two instances of simple CPU. The spec CPU instance has its own regs variable. We also need two instruction dispatchers, one for the executing CPU, which keeps the speculative registers in sync, and another for the speculating CPU, which leaves the programmer visible state unchanged. As I mentioned earlier, only a subset of instructions are available under speculation. We limited it here to memory loads and operations on values, but other instructions like the Havoc set could be included. The next step is defined as a non-deterministic choice of either executed or speculated instructions. Since this talk is about security properties, before stating them we need to define the roles and projections of the system state. We consider the victim to be a high privilege mode, for example, an operating system kernel. It has its own state consisting of registers and high memory. Such high memory may or may not contain secret information. The high mode can accept input and provide output, for example, system call arguments and results return to the caller. In our model, this consists of all the low memory and the registers or when entering or exiting the high mode.
The attacker is a low privilege mode, for example, a user application with a low state consisting of registers and low memory. Without a timing side channel, the attacker can only observe the content of the low memory and its own registers. With cache side channels, however, the attacker can probe whether a memory location is cached using a difference in the execution time of a corresponding memory access. We have not explicitly included time as a state in this model, however, we define the attacker observable state as a function mapping low addresses to both the values in memory and the cached state. Because of the access OK operator defined earlier, the model does not permit the attacker to directly observe any high memory locations. Confidentiality is a non-interference property stating that the attacker cannot observe anything other than what the victim allows in its output. In other words, the attacker's observation is a deterministic function of only the initial state, victim's output and its own actions. We modeled this as a property over two low state identical behaviors that must have the same low observation functions. We assume that the individual commands or instructions are deterministic. This means that for a given state, an instruction always leads to the same next state in all behaviors. We define integrity since it complements the confidentiality property, although this is not included in the TLA plus model. This property holds when the victim's execution is not affected by the attacker beyond the input provided. This can be modeled similarly with a hyper property over two behaviors that start from the same initial high state, have the same input, and must always lead to the same high state and output. TLA plus does not directly support hyper properties. However, we can create a new specification encompassing two behaviors that start from the same low state and low observation and perform a similar execution or speculation next step. I highlighted the requirement that, following an executing step, the registers are the same in both behaviors. What we actually want here is that the low observations are the same for an executing step under the assumption that the algorithm itself does not leak information through side channels. Using regs equality may be a bit more restrictive, but I don't think TLA plus supports a low obs prime notation. For the confidentiality property, the new hyperspec must imply that the low observation functions are identical. Now that we defined our specification and its properties, we can run it through TLC, the TLA plus model checker. Probably expected, the confidentiality property does not hold. This figure repre represents the reported trace of the two behaviors of our specification. For space reasons, the trace has been simplified and the low mode execution removed. As you can see, we have two behaviors starting from the same uh, low state and low observation, but with potentially different high state holding secret information. The R1 register contains an untrusted value D1 provided by the attacker. The victim sets the R3 register to a high address H1 uh, that is not expected to contain any secret. Subsequently, the algorithm decides that the D1 is out of bounds and changes the executed instructions flow. However, the CPU continues to use this untrusted value under speculation. An operation combining uh, the safe address H1 with the untrusted value D1 yields a new address H2 which contains secret information and therefore is different in the two behaviors. The load from H2 sets the speculative register R1 to two different values in, in the two behaviors. <coughs> These are used to compute two different low addresses and the speculative loads from those addresses leave two different imprints in the low address cache. The confidentiality property is now violated since the low observation function is different in the two behaviors. <coughs> this trace resembles uh, at an abstract level a specter variant one exploit. 
How do the speculative execution vulnerabilities map onto our abstract model? We've just seen a Spectre variant 1 example on the previous slide with a confidentiality property violated by the speculating CPU. The software workarounds usually try to make speculative instructions flow not depend on untrusted data. For example, behind the conditional branch, the register holding such data would be zeroed if deemed unsafe. Spectre variant 2 is an integrity violation in the speculating CPU. If we consider a program counter as part of the register set, on certain CPU implementation, its values can be driven from the attacker by training the branch predictor. Note that this is only for the speculating CPU. This would make it much easier to employ a Spectre v1 attack. The workarounds limit the influence one mode has over the branch prediction in another mode, either by explicit flushing or by tagging the branch predictor entries with additional context information. Meltdown or variant 3 doesn't even need the victim to run. A speculated load in the low mode is not checked against the high access permissions. While the value loaded cannot be used directly, it can be made through a set of operations to leave a trace in the cache state that's probed with executed instructions. The workaround on the affected CPUs is to enforce such permission check by other means like kernel page table isolation. Spectre variant 4 is in some way similar to variant 1 only that the secret high memory location is one written by the victim with a non-private value and considered algorithmically safe. Under speculation, a load instruction from this address is allowed to read data prior to the store, therefore revealing potentially secret information. The model can be adapted for this vulnerability by using separate memory state in the speculating CPU instance. The workaround is either a hardware knob disabling this behavior with some performance penalty or explicit software use of specific barriers. Following the disclosure of the speculation side channel vulnerabilities, the ARM architecture introduced new barriers to help with the software workarounds. In this model, we haven't included data value prediction in the speculating CPU but that's equivalent to allowing the Havoc instruction set under speculation. CSDB prevents those instructions. SSBB does not allow a speculative load from reading values prior to a store. Uh, we just mentioned it in the Spectre before. <coughs> Example on the previous slide. SB disallows uh, the set of instructions under speculation that may have an observable side effect. There are several papers on non-interference and observational determinism, but not enough space to be written here. I would mention the ARM white paper on speculative execution. This is not about formal models, but rather a description of the Spectre and Meltdown variants as they apply to the ARM processors. Of course, this model wouldn't have been possible without the specifying systems book. A source of inspiration on modeling the security properties um, in, in this presentation was uh, Subramanian's paper on uh, secure enclaves. This paper does not cover speculative execution, but it does cover side channels. Guarnieri's Spectator paper proposes a slightly different approach to modeling speculation, but is focused mostly on analyzing specific code gadgets for vulnerabilities. If you are interested in the TLA Plus model presented here, please follow the link. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you at the TLA Plus community event in October 2020.